As someone who loves to be organized and loved watching productivity content when I was around like 14, 15, I come to learn that these videos actually really helped me in the long run of my first year of university. They'll help me manage the one area of my life that is really important that everyone should try to master, which is budgeting and finance. I guess you could say I've done you guys a favor as as soon as I hit university, I've been meticulously tracking everything in my finances. I've done the spreadsheets, had a monthly budgeting reset routine, like I did it all. So with that being said, in this video, I'm going to be doing a very detailed guide on how to budget and manage your finances in university. I feel like there's a lot of things that I'm going to cover in this video that I haven't really seen people talk about in detail. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So the first most fundamental point about budgeting is that you can't set yourself an initial budget if you don't even know how much it takes to maintain yourself. So I highly recommend that between September and December, so your first semester, just track your spending. Of course, don't spend stupidly and buy unnecessary things you do not need. But you first need to understand your spending habits. Maybe there'll be certain recurring costs that happen each month such as your subscriptions but even when it comes to your food shopping maybe you consistently buy the same things from the same shop so you'll probably get to the point that you even memorize probably the prices of some things as organized as i love to be when it comes to money budgeting i actually first went into the whole budgeting spreadsheet kind of thing but i literally could not do that because i did not know how much it takes to maintain myself every month a very important tip, do not restrict yourself when it comes to budgeting. It's because as each month goes by, you'll tend to find that you will get a lot of unexpected costs. As in sometimes the universities, most of the time they do like free events and all that kind of stuff, but you will have to spend money like with socializing or if that the university is doing like a trip or something, that's like an additional extra cost. So the commuting and like purchasing like the trip itself. So once you come to understand what your spending habits are, if there's clearly something you like to buy on a regular basis, maybe like every month or week. So let's say if you like to go ahead and grab a coffee and you also like to purchase something from the bakery, not something you do every day, maybe something you do every Friday, then you go ahead and keep that in. If it's within your means and it's not super extortionate, then you go do that. Or if every month you like to get your nails done, and it's within your means then go ahead and keep that within your monthly budgeting i'm not going to sit down here and tell you to completely cut out everything that is not a necessity because if we all did that and only spent our money on things like food our rent and travel then life would honestly be so boring especially uni life this is what i did on notion i honestly went through and tracked every single detail. I actually used um, a Starling bank card, which is so helpful because you have this like chart spreadsheet kind of thing where you can easily identify what you spend most of your money on and you have the ability to label and customize certain purchases. Now, before going to university, you want to minimize your costs as much as possible. Like for me, I forgot so many things when coming to uni, it's actually ridiculous. And the thing is, I live around four to three hour drive or on a train from my university. So I ended up having to buy so many little things and essentials all online and that honestly racked up the cost. But luckily for me, I was able to get my student flex card before going to university. So I was able to use that to buy all the things that I needed and I forgot. And I highly recommend if you know you're gonna go to university or even if you haven't got like your offer solidified but you have applied, start buying things now. I promise you when it hits like September, everyone's going to all be buying stuff. And I remember when I was kind of late to buying all my university things, the shops like B&M, Wilco and all these other places, all the shelves were mainly empty like the homeware section because everyone's buying all their stuff for uni. Because if you start buying things now, you're able to spread out the cost of how much you want to spend for all the things you need for uni instead of buying things all in one lump. Speaking on the topic of money, the most important thing you need to figure out is where are you going to get the money from to maintain yourself? So you need to figure out how much you're getting from student finance and they will break it down to you for how much you're getting every single term. Once you figure that out, you'd probably want to split that into three months so you can do a budget of every month. And you'll soon come to find out student finance is literally nowhere near enough money to maintain yourself. So you need another source of income. So you want to be able to get a student card and bank account. 
So the student account I got was with Nationwide. There are so much more that I will link in the description below. But the reason why I got this is that it's up to £3,000 a year. I think this is the most amount of money compared to all the other banks that I saw. So basically each year you get £1,000. So my limit for this year is £1,000. Next year I'll be able to ask for increase and so on. And of course with all student bank accounts, um, when you go into an arranged overdraft, it's all interest free. And you don't pay any of this money back until you've graduated. So those are the conditions of the nationwide card. Now, I really want to talk about Santander because so many people pick Santander mainly because of this one incentive, which I'm going to break down to you right now. So Santander, with their student bank account card, you only get up to £2,000. But along with that, the incentive is that you get a four year railway card. Now, if you were to apply to a railway card now, you only get it for three years or you have the option of one year. Now, the one for three years is £70. So according to Santander, the four year railway card approximately has a value of £100. Also, here is a breakdown on the limit you can have each year when you're with Santander. And you can clearly tell it's very different to nationwide. So the difference between a three year railway card and a four year railway card, obviously a four year railway card doesn't exist, but the difference in price between them isn't really that much compared to having a £2,000 limit to £3,000, that's a whole £1,000 difference. So I'd rather go with Nationwide. That is just my opinion, but you can choose whatever you please. Also, some important information. So I know some people who have gone to university at the age of 17 years old instead of 18 is because some student bank accounts don't allow you to open up an account with them unless you are the age of 18. So I also have a resource link down below on banks that allow you to open at 17. I noticed this was an issue as people are wondering how they were able to finance like at least their first month of university without having a student bank account because of their age. So the incentive I did have was £100 cash. I can't remember exactly like what you needed to do to get that. I think you needed a certain amount of money in your bank account, but I'll put it somewhere on the screen or somewhere in text. Also, what I found really great about this was before I went into university, like I mentioned, I actually used my student card because I needed to get a few things. Okay, so real quick guys, this is post me editing and there's just a few things that I just wanted to talk about real quick. So for the girlies that like to get their nails done, lashes, hair, all that lovely stuff, the best thing you can do for yourself is either learn the skill for yourself or find someone at uni who can do that because they'll definitely do it at a more reasonable prices than than people outside of uni who probably have a more established business. I mean, luckily for me, the only maintenance I need is braids and then I'm good. But as girls, I know that getting like your nails and lashes, all that kind of stuff, is just part of like what you do like every month or so. But then it also can get expensive. So make sure you try and scout out for people like that. Earlier when I showed the graphic on how much you're left with after your rent is deducted, it just goes to show that student SFE does not give you enough money for most of us, this will probably be the most amount of money we have seen in our bank accounts. Please don't start getting brave. Do not start getting brave. That is the time you seriously need to start behaving yourself. So in this video, I just dropped a lot of information, but in my next video, I definitely want to break it down a little bit more, show you how exactly I was able to manage and budget everything that I've just mentioned in this video. So stay tuned for that by subscribing down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!